Hi, my name is Mark and in this video I'm going to show you how you can get your edits from Premiere Pro to Resolve and back. Okay, before we start, here's a little disclaimer. Round tripping from Premiere to Resolve and back is not as easy as you might think or hope. There are many pitfalls along the way that can make your life a lot harder. At the end of this video I will summarize the most common issues I came across so far. So stick around to see that. But first let's have a look at the process in general. We are in Premiere and I already loaded a sequence from one of my last tutorials with multiple clips on several tracks. We have audio in here, we have a few dissolves and we have two MoGraph templates. As you can see, it is a pretty basic timeline. And that is not because I was lazy and didn't want to prepare something fancy. The first thing you have to think of before attempting to round trip to Resolve is your edit. Premiere and Resolve are working very differently under the hood and because of that almost all effects you can apply in Premiere will not translate well or at all to Resolve. That means you have two main options to choose from before round tripping. Number one is to keep your edit as basic as possible, then bring it into Resolve to work on the colors, export the individual clips and bring them back into Premiere to apply effects. Number two is to finish your whole video except from the colors in Premiere, render all your clips you applied any effects to, replace them in the timeline, then go into Resolve to do the colors and export the final video straight from Resolve. Both options are not ideal if there will be any changes to the edit after you have brought the project to Resolve. So the version of the edit you hand over should ideally be picture locked. Just keep that in mind and now let's round trip. To prepare your timeline to be the least error prone, you should reduce all your video tracks to one. You don't have to, but it's good practice. I won't do it here for the purpose of demonstration. Now there are three possible ways to get the edit from Premiere to Resolve. Via an EDL, AAF or XML. Basically, all three methods convert your timeline into a computer-readable list of your edit decisions to tell Resolve or any other grading or editing application where your cuts are placed, how long they are, if there are any effects, and so on. EDL is the simplest of the three formats and it can translate cuts and some basic effects to another program. I wouldn't recommend it if one of the other two formats can be used. AAF and XML are more complex and can include more effects. I personally found XMLs to work best between Premiere and Resolve, so I go with that. Here's a comparison of the same timeline being translated with an AAF and XML. You can see that the XML version worked a little bit better. It has the intro in it, which is a nested sequence in Premiere, and the audio did come over as well. To export your timeline as an XML or AAF, go to File, Export, AAF or Final Cut Pro XML. Choose a location to save the file and hit OK. After the file was created, there will be a little warning telling you to check the translation report. Click OK and let's have a look at the report. It tells you exactly where there were issues so you can go back and fix them if you want. For example, the MoGraph templates were not translated, the audio effects did not work, and the film dissolve effect was replaced with a cross dissolve. In this case, I don't care about the issues, so we can move on. Open DaVinci Resolve and create a new project. I name mine Round Trip and click OK. In Resolve, go to File, Import Timeline, Import AAF EDL XML. Select the XML you just created in Premiere and open it. A window will open where you can adjust a few settings. Just leave them on default unless you know what you're doing and hit OK. In my case, some clips were not found, but those are the MoGraph templates I mentioned earlier. DaVinci now shows me a log of errors and warnings that occurred. As we know, two clips are offline, but no further warnings occurred. Now you have transferred your timeline from Premiere to Resolve more or less successfully. 
You might notice that the edit came over pretty nicely, but the audio is not in sync and the sound for the intro is missing completely. Hi, my name is Mark and in this video I'm going to show you how you can back up your effects rack presets from Adobe Audition. There's not much you can do about it unless you want to fix it manually in Resolve. It's just another quirk of this round trip. We can now do whatever we want with the clips in our timeline as if we had edited in Resolve from the start. We can change the edit, add effects in Fusion, do our audio in Fairlight and do the color grading. I will do tutorials on all of that in the future, so subscribe if you're interested in those. I just delete those two offline clips because we don't need them and in the settings add a random output LUT so we can see that we changed something. When you're finished working in Resolve, go to the Deliver tab and choose Premiere XML in the top left. Here you can choose a location for the new XML file and the new clips. Below that are the video settings. Resolve will export all the clips in our timeline as individual videos so we can bring them back into Premiere as a new timeline. You can leave these settings on default or change them to your liking. For example, I like to use DNX HD as I find that Premiere runs more smoothly with that codec. Click Add to Render Queue and the render job appears on the right side. Hit Start Render and DaVinci will export the entire timeline and an XML to the specified location. After the render has finished, go back to Premiere and go to File Import. Locate the new XML and import it. It will find the clips that Resolve just rendered and create a new timeline with them that should look exactly the same as in Resolve. I say should because sometimes Premiere does some weird stuff like randomly adding LUTs to the footage, like you can see in this shot. So my pro tip is to go through and control every shot. After that you can apply all the effects you want and finish your video. Okay, by now you will have realized that this whole round tripping workflow is not exactly flexible and it is pretty error prone. But nonetheless, there are good reasons to work that way for certain projects. Because of that, I made a list of things that either don't translate at all between the two applications or where it is gamble if it works. I just read it off the screen here because I don't know it by heart. So pitfalls to look out for in your projects include transitions and dissolves. Some work, some don't, you just have to try. Time remapping, pretty much all video effects, including Lumetri. Audio may be out of sync or missing. That is especially true if you edited your clips in Adobe Audition from within Premiere. Audio effects, including volume automation, scaling, opacity, nested timelines, MoGraph templates, linked After Effects compositions, and the list definitely goes on. But those are the things I come across most often in my own projects. So keep an eye out for those if you are round tripping to resolve. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a like and consider subscribing for more reviews and tutorials in the future. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.